All right. So we are recording. Okay, go ahead. Perfect. Uh, welcome to OneNote. Um, my name is Jackie Gallioni, and I do a bunch of training for CompuVision. And so they'd asked me if I would do an introduction to OneNote, and then Kara said, OK, but you only have 30 minutes. So I'm going to fly through this. I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff. We're not going to go in depth. I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Um, when I was doing the run through with Kara, we talked about probably doing a second version of this where we would go a little bit more into detail. But I just want to show you a little bit about what OneNote can do. And then I learned everything literally by reading and watching videos on the internet. So um, I'm fully confident that um, you can too. It's a really easy program to figure out. It's really just point and click for the most part. So once you know what it's capable of, then it's easy to figure out what to do. So um, I'll start with the fact that my journey started about four and a half years ago with OneNote. And I will um, admit that I was a, a self-proclaimed lover of, of paper and notebooks. Um, I'm sitting in my craft room and I don't know if you can just see my screen or if you can see my webcam behind me, but I've got paper um, everywhere. So what created um, this for me was um, it was the beginning of our experiment into Office 365 and using OneDrive and being able to sync notebooks uh, across devices. We, uh, I sat down and I think what truly sold it for me is when I was um, speaking with a colleague and he showed me his iPad and he showed me his pencil. And Bobby so... Um, is now joining. <laughs> and so what I was able to do is um, write in the closest thing I've ever been able to find to um, an actual pencil. And so it was really, really fabulous. Um, so I'm just gonna take you through um, a little bit about what I what we can do with OneNote. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just walk us in. This is how I always start. Um, how I create a new notebook is I actually go into Office 365, I log in, I go to OneDrive and I click new. Now, the reason I do it this way is because four and a half years ago when I started this process, um, this was how you added notebooks into OneDrive. So you, I click new and you can click OneNote notebook. Okay, and then from there, I did that yesterday to create this um, test and training one. which is just down here. And then you can open it up and it will show you the web version of it. And so you can do all, most things in the web version, but I use this to click um, in here. When it loads, it will give me the option to open in an app, right? Open in an app and then it will open in your OneNote, okay? Which I already have it um, open, so I'm just gonna do that. So in order to open a notebook, you can also, any notebook that you've opened on that device will show up in here. And you can click open other notebooks as well. So um, I just want to walk you through a little bit about what your notebook looks like. So if you think of a OneNote like a binder, right? These are your tabs or your dividers across the top. And then within each divider, you can click and you can scroll through, right? So you can create different pages. Right. So the advantage I find to OneNote over a traditional notebook, well, there, there's several, but number one is that I can move these around. So in my notebook, either I create sections and I put them in, um, or like in a traditional notebook, you basically work from page one all the way through to, to the end. And then you have to go back and, and find it. There's no search feature and there's no ability to move your pages around. So in OneNote, I can move the, my pages around. So if I want to create a new section, I can just click on this little create new section. I can call it my training section. Okay. If I want to rename it, I can just right click it and I can rename it. Right. If I want this tab to be in the front, I can I can move it to wherever I want. If I want to create a new page, I just create a new page. Okay. So within this page, I'm going to go um, April 8th training. Right. Whatever I title it over here is what it's going to call it over here. Okay. And I maybe want to move this page up here. There we go. Okay. And then it's, it's as simple as using Word, point and click. If I click here and start typing, what's 
nice about this is if I want to move this eventually over here, I can do that. If I want my text over here, then I can do that, right? Just like Word, I have the ability to make the bold things. I can change colors. I can make it bigger. I can change my font. Right. OK. I can create bulleted lists, right? If I want to start over here and I want to create a list, I can create a bulleted list. I need to write my blog post. I need to edit my blog post. I need to prep for training. I'm just looking very interesting. So the other really cool thing about OneNote is the ability to add tags. So let's say I want to create these to do's. If I go up here and I click the to do tag, it makes them all into to do's. Take this off, right? And then I can search my to do's. So if I want to, right, if I want to create, I can, well, I can toggle this. So I can also um, use it, the ability to search um, search tags. If I want to create this tag as something um, to remember, okay, this is a remember for later. I'm in a, a meeting and I want to remember this for later, right? Then I can search by tags. So if I want to find, um, here's my to-dos, right? I have a whole bunch of to-dos, practice, and I can keep going through that. Right. So what I really like about the ability to use OneNote is that I can, by putting it, putting it in OneDrive and saving it in the cloud, I have the ability um, to sync it across multiple devices. So yesterday I created this on a different computer, and then I can open it up on this computer. And so while you can't see me right now, I have my iPad here, and I'm going to open this, and I can write on my iPad and it will show up here. So I'm just gonna, it's gonna take a test, test section. So if I can go over, I created in this test section, I just wrote hello. So we'll watch for a second, it'll show up here. But what I really like is I can go over to my draw. See there, I did that, this hello I made on my iPad and it will show up here. Well, if I make changes, here it will sync over to my iPad and it syncs fairly quickly. So you can, if you have the ability to be really good with your mouse, you can actually draw, right? And I can create, right? If I want to draw, I'm just not very good at it. Right? You're awesome at drawing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I can highlight things, right? If I want to highlight, this right this works much better on my ipad with my actual um ipad pencil um my eye pencil i can change the color and thickness so instead of walking around with my notepads and my pencil case full of my i want this pen and i like colored pens i like certain thicknesses for some things and i like highlighters for others then it's all just at my fingertips um, i carry one thing around with me and i have access to everything as well i can carry instead of carrying a bunch of notebooks, I carry my one iPad and I have access to all my notebooks on that. I haven't run out of space yet and I didn't buy that big of an iPad and it's now four and a half years old. So um, that's pretty, pretty cool, I think. So let me just look at the next thing. So if I want to go back, what I thought was kind of cool is, uh, let's go back to my text. Ah. No, I've lost. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my training page. So I okay, go back to my draw. We're gonna go back to typing. That's what I want to do. If I want to add this, let's say this is a to do that came out of a meeting that I had. So I can click this and I can click Outlook Tasks, and I can make it into a task for this week. And then if I go over to my Outlook, that will actually show up as an Outlook task. So uh, as you're making your notes. You can create tasks that then remind you because everything is synced. It's all part of um, Microsoft Office. 
The other thing you can do, which is kind of cool, is you want to create, you're going into a meeting, so that we're going to call this OneNote training meeting. And I want to remember, I can click my meeting details, and it will show me my meetings that are in my calendar. So OneNote meeting training, and it will insert, uh, it might take a little bit, but it'll tell me the date, the time, um, who the participants are, and um, so that I can remember and I know I can go back, right? And then I can create my notes. So this becomes really important as you're tracking who's attended meetings, especially I would think this would be helpful for, for sales. So another feature that I love is the ability to insert a file printout. So you can click an attachment if you want, but I love the file printout and I use this all the time when I go to my meetings for agendas. So I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna go to my OneNote and the one pager print. So whenever I go to meetings, I will set up my agenda. I'll make sure it's synced to my iPad and then I can write all my notes right on the agenda. So we're just gonna insert it. If you have really, really long documents, like sometimes my my pack, my board packages for this one board that I sit on are 60 to 80 pages. So there's a little bit of finickiness as you sort that out, but overall um, it works great. Oops, okay, there we go. So it's just gonna load for a second and then I have this awesome summary of OneNote, which Kara is going to send to you after this. I can write my notes. So on here, if I'm going to go into train any kind of training, and I have this um, already on here that I can create my notes. I can create notes here. Right along my slide. And so if I go up here, I can also group these sections. That's what I meant to show you in the beginning. So if I want to click new section group, maybe it is. New section group, right? And I'm going to create one called COSC, which is the name of a group that I, I am in. Then I can take this this February 17th and I can move it into that group, right? So here's all I can move it into any one note that I have. But I'm going to move it into COSC. I click this to go back and this March, I'm going to do the same thing. And that's the way you can keep things um, really organized. So here is an example of where I've inserted a file printout and then made notes all over it. And OneNote has a really great search feature. So Office 365 is sort of built on the, the one of the big premises is around collaboration and multiple people being able to work um, on the same document at once and around search. So I always use this as a really great example. So I searched the word monistic, which is the name of a, a school that we talked about uh, in my one meeting. And if I click here, you can see where it's actually picked it up from my handwriting, right? And that's not even neat. So the search feature is actually quite powerful um, in one note. So, and I can change it. This is, it can look in all notebooks. It can just look on one notebook. It can find on certain pages. So. Um, if you knew that you wrote some notes on something, but you can't remember what notebook it was in, then it will search all your notebooks. Or you can change this to just this notebook. So the other thing you can do that's kind of neat is, this is my one, I, a section I copied from another notebook that I used. And we were doing this bathroom renovation project. And traditionally I would have had a file and I would have put all my information in the file and I would have um, made my notes in my notebook and hoped that I, I had the information where I needed to go. So what I did was instead I thought I'm going to try and see how this works in OneNote. So if I click here and go insert picture, insert, I can go um, a picture on my iPad or my mobile device, I can it'll let me access my camera as well. So what I did was I clicked here, I inserted a picture of my bathroom, obviously before the children actually cleaned it. And then I used the drawing tools 
to write down all the different measurements and stuff that I needed and I drew it out. Right, so I could create all my notes here. As I was going around, uh, I looked on the internet and I copied and pasted a bunch of different ideas, um, pictures, and then I made notes. So that when I went to plan it out, I had all of it in one spot. Okay, I found that I liked this. So I took a picture of it. And then when I went around, so when I went looking for tile, I did the same thing. So I could compile it all in one place. And I could make whatever notes I liked. And that way I remembered where it was and what I needed. I'm just going to look at what else I have. So one of the really great things about OneNote, especially when you save it in OneDrive, is the ability to share. So I have a, a notebook called uh, Training, Culture, and Engagement that I share with my, with my boss, with David. And we used that as a shared notebook where we could both keep information. So we had on there a page called Running Agenda. I had a tab called David. And I had a page called Running Agenda. And if, as we thought of things that we needed to sit down and talk about, we would put it in that running agenda. So when we sat and we met, we both could just go through that agenda and say, okay, is there anything new that we need to talk about? Oh, there was this thing that I remembered that I wouldn't have necessarily remembered. And we were both able to add things. And he he might look at something, we planned a whole leadership program. And as we would talk about different concepts, he's he would say, oh, I have this resource. And he would just copy and paste it into, into that page so that when I went to use it, it was all there. Most of our teams now have team sites um, on, on, in SharePoint, and every team also then has a OneNote, and that OneNote becomes shared with every member of that team. So we use them a lot for our weekly meetings um, or our biweekly meetings, and we put a running agenda on. We use the EOS system, so we have our level 10 agenda on there, and then anyone can access it. So part of our level 10 agenda is the ability to put issues on an issues list, and to be able to track seven day action items. So anyone on that team can go in there, check off that they did their seven day action item and add any issues that they want to, um, to discuss. So there's quite a bit of power in layering OneNote into um, a SharePoint or a, or a OneDrive and sharing it out with multiple people. So one of the things that I think is really cool as well is let's just say we're OneNote training. Let's say you're going into a course and you're going to take something, then I'm going to go insert. If I want to go um, record audio, I can click record audio here and it's then going to record everything that it said. And let's say about a minute in, I take a note about, wow, this is cool that it can do this. And a couple couple minutes later, it might something else really cool might come up, and I might make another note. And then when I stop it, now when I go back, when I click this, you can see there's a little arrow here. So if I go back, I will and click play, it will play the exact moment that I started typing this note. And same thing with down here, right? So that's a really great way to not have to listen to the whole recording of something. If you're going to go take a, a course or listen to a lecture, um, I can see really good use for students to be able to do this. And they, then they can go back and they're like, oh, what, what was he saying when he said this? And I'll have to listen to the whole thing or go back and find it. Another, just some of the cool features, like we have about 10 minutes left. So I just want to go over some of the cool features. If I want to create a, a table, so I can go column one. If I hit tab, it'll automatically turn it into a table. Column two, column three. And then if I hit enter, it takes it down. So I can go test blue kitten. I hit the enter and it goes down and creates a whole new row. So it's just a really quick way of adding uh, a table. The other thing that I think is kind of cool is the ability to do, I call it auto math, right? So you're sitting there and you go nine plus nine equals enter, and it will do the math for you. That's sort of, you don't have to always pull out your calculator to do that. And I believe I've actually tried it where it will do order of operations. So let's say nine plus nine, nine times, I think it might need to be the star for times. 
Yep, yeah, so it does order of operations for all of you um, math freaks. If you don't know what our order of operations is, then that's okay. We'll just uh, we'll skip that. So the other, I'm just trying to look. I'm just looking through my notes to see what other cool things that I want to make sure I show you. One of the things that I used to do when I was doing research is I would open up a Word document and I would. As I'm researching and finding cool information, I would copy and paste it into that Word document. And I would have to copy the Word document or the part of the Word, the web page that I wanted. And I would also have to copy the URL so that I could cite it later and then I knew exactly where I was going to get it. With this, so if I want to go search kittens, and go down that rabbit hole. So we'll go to Wikipedia. And we'll say, okay, I'm doing a report on kittens. I want to copy this. And I want to paste it. It automatically puts the URL that you found that information. Wherever you're copying it from, it will put that URL down. So you don't have to manually do that. So I find that actually really helpful as I'm doing research and compiling information for um, creating training or documents, what have you. I can go back and find it because there's nothing worse than when I think, oh, I want to read more about this and I can't remember where I found it. So the other app, there's an app on your phone that you can get for your phone called, if you have Office 365, called Office Lens. And Office Lens does a couple of really neat things. And one of them is the ability to take a picture of a whiteboard and it will take out the glare and, and straighten it up and get rid of the weird angles as best it can. It does a pretty good job of that. But the other really cool thing it does is if you take a picture of a business card and sit, tell it, okay, I'm taking a picture of a business card, it will then take the information using um, AI and extrapolate it and create a contact and then put a copy of that business card into your default notebook. So if you have an Office 365 account, your default notebook will be um, general, I think it's your name at domain. And so in there, when you send stuff to OneNote, that's where it sends, they call it your default notebook. And I believe you can change your default notebook, but it will send a copy of that business card there. And then it creates a contact and it can pull out the address and work numbers and business numbers and, and cell numbers. So it actually does a, a really good job, which is a great feature as you are at a networking event. You can just open Office Lens on your phone and you can take the picture of it and it will send it to OneNote so that you have a copy of it and then create a contact from it, uh, from it as well. So, oh, a template page, that was the other one. So I don't wanna go into how to create a template page, but you can create a template. And so this was a template that I had created for when I was looking after employee onboarding. So it was all the things that I had to do every time we hired a new employee. And by creating this as a template page, I was able then to say, in this section, whenever I add a new page, this is what I want. So when I clicked in that section, new new page, it automatically created this page. And then I could rename it. And this could be the onboarding checklist for Jane Doe. And then I could start to create, you know, I could track what I was doing. So that becomes really important. It's a little clunky to edit your templates, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um, but you can have different templates for different sections as well. So that becomes really, really useful. Um, another kind of neat thing is if you have an email and you want to keep it, you can type, if you take that email and send it to me at onenote.com, then it will automatically take that and create a page in your default notebook, and then you can move it from later because I showed you how you can move all your pages. I'm just going to look through my notes and see what else. It was kind of neat. So there are apps for... I, I know certainly for the iPhone and the iPad, there is your desktop app and your, your web app. I imagine there is an app for Android. I don't use that, so I'm not totally sure. Um, I showed you how to move your pages around. It's easy to move your sections around. And your template pages. Oh, that has tasks. So if I wanted to then um, back to test such a new page. 
you can click um, insert um, a picture and then it's any picture that you have. Here's an accountability chart that I have and it'll put it there. You can then move it around as well. Just like anywhere you can put it anywhere. So it's a little more forgiving, say, than Word as well. And I think I've whipped through that all pretty quickly. Um, there is a really great add-in called OneTastic, which I'll just write here. So OneTastic is, and you can, I think the URL is getonetastic.com, but if you search OneTastic, it'll bring it up, and there's all sorts of different um, add-ins that you can get from, from OneTastic. So it's about 227, and I feel like I've raced through this. We are going to do a second version of this where we look a little bit more in depth at some of the stuff um, around like creating a template or um, how to set up your default notebook and where that is um, that we're going to look at probably in May sometime. If I go back. Uh, we also have, and this will show up in your follow-up email from Kara, uh, links to three blogs that I've written about OneNote. So Confessions of a Paperholic was one I wrote probably almost four and a half years ago, maybe four years ago about my switch from um, heavy love of paper into this new digital world. Um, OneNote success was another one that I'd written about some of the, the OneNote um, successes that I'd had. And then Changing the Way of Doing Business was a blog that I wrote actually for Microsoft. They had seen us tweeting out about OneNote and approached CompuVision to see if I would be interested in writing a blog. So that one talks a little bit more about how we work collaboratively. And I think I, I feature OneNote and OneDrive in there. So those are all three and they're direct links to our blog so that you don't have to go uh, digging for them. As well, know that we have some upcoming training ahead. Um, next week, we have Nathan doing Teams. Uh, in two weeks, I'm going to do one around maintaining positive morale amongst employees. And then at the end of the month, we have David Bridges, our president, who's going to talk about what we learned along the way during the, the pan pandemic. So with that, it's about 2.28. Um, you can follow us on Twitter if you have any questions. Um, it's at CompuVision Biz or at Jackie Surgeoner. I challenge each of you to, if you haven't been using OneNote or if you have, to take a screenshot of you using it, um, post it on Twitter, um, tag us, and we'd love to um, have in the fun with you. So thanks so much. I um, 229, that's not so bad. We really want to get you in and out in 30 minutes. I know your time is really valuable. And if you have any questions, then feel free to reach out to either Kara or to me, and we'll do our best to, to answer them. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys very much for joining. And your email will be uh, sent out today. Bobby is now exiting. Hey, B Town. Hey, Brennan. Oh, see, he did the put himself on, but don't pay attention. No, there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Please, as if. You can see all my paper. <laughs> yeah. Those, I know. Uh, I'm like, I needed a room with a door and more light than I had. I'm like, I'm my craft room, but it's like an unmitigated disaster, right? <laughs> well, you uh, you look fantastic. Did you get a new camera? Yeah. Um, this is not yet. We're getting there. Uh, it's coming, I think, some point today. But we found this. I forgot that I'd ordered a webcam for Kayla to do piano lessons. So Glenn got that set up for me yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. And then you have another one coming? Yeah. The Logitech is coming. But this oh, one was this one. Yeah, this one got, was this, so good, too. This wide angle is fantastic. And it's very crisp. 
Yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. It's a live and learn. It's really, really hard to stare at a screen and talk as if you're teaching people and not see any people. Yeah, what you need to do is stare right into the camera like this mm -hmm. and just uh, pretend like you're talking to a real human being. Yeah, yeah, it's a little awkward. I'm used to like teaching, I'm used to talking to like, you know, 30 teenagers, so. Yeah, 30 some years of just talking to myself has made this very easy on me, but you'll get there. It's just a training thing. <laughs> that's oh that's good that's good so next week i have off that's good and it was it was okay though yeah i thought everything was uh was good i liked your like oh let me check my notes and just make sure i got everything i wanted to like a lot of a lot of like webinars and stuff you watch are just like hello welcome to the webinar let us look at this and i like that there's a bit of a human element and like oh hang on a second uh Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I so. can't remember, like, I did it with Kara yesterday, and it was, like, a totally different order. I have it in an order, but I'm like, oh, I, I still, you just sort of, like, you think of things, and then I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to talk about that. Okay, so we're going back to it. Uh, yes, I will Karen. do it again. Oh. Your, your um, comments are good from your chat. Lots of people said, thank you, I learned new tricks. Oh, good. That's good. P.S. Kara, what did it, what? Um, I was going to say, uh, oh God, brain turning off. Hold on. Oh, um, Nathan doing teams. Um, has he put a uh, thought or effort into that one yet? No. Cause I was just thinking, you know how Joey and his team did the teams training internally? Um, I was just yep. thinking like they killed that. Like maybe. I know. Maybe we should get them to do the one next week. Um, there's also the side effect of when I was looking at my teams today and thinking about how I would do something like that. There's a lot of weird conversations and stuff that I just wouldn't want people to see and like customer stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure that Joey and them had like a test environment they were using. So I was just going to like flag it and say, hey, we should maybe ask Joey and team if they can do next next week's. I'm fine with that. If you want to say, hey, I was on the teams with Kara and Jackie and, you know, just because of the share screen and all of that, I mm -hmm. had asked him to reach out to John Wally previously, but it just hasn't been done yet. Right. And then I also wanted to volunteer and say, um, I put together a slide deck and I did a demo for TPG of how to use Microsoft Bind Time. Um, and how to use uh, Calendly. Okay. And some of them had seen it before, but others were like, <clears throat> like mind blowed. Um, could we put me on the calendar to do that as well from in one yep. piece? Yeah, we can. Sweet. Absolutely, we can. I think that would be great. Well, I got. I think other. I think people. Anyone I tell about find time is just like that's. Amazing. Oh, I know, and I use it all the time, and no one knows how to use it. Um, right. Yeah, you know, you're good. Um, we had 31 in participants um, today, so a little bit less. Yeah, oh yeah, not bad. For a hundred, there was like over a hundred signed up though, so I'm wondering if, you know, they didn't want one note and maybe they wanted Teams or like because they signed up for multiple ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering. I thought we'd have kind of closer to 50, but it's 30 minutes, right? And we had a lot of people who came in. I don't know if you noticed, Jackie, but they came in and because they were late, they left. Oh, okay. So oh. we had people that came in, like there were like eight or nine people. So maybe we should start it like, or when I send out the reminder email, just I'll say we start right at two. Yeah. I think it's really important to honor people's time and like, Me I too. hate doing, you know, I think a lot of people don't do that, but I am, um, I'm big on like, if I say it's two to two thirty, I, I'm starting at two and I want to be done by two 30 and I'm really happy. Like if I can be done two minutes earlier, then. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Especially when it's a Wednesday, right? Midweek um, of a long weekend too. So I think that could be part of it as well. So we'll, um, we'll keep trucking. Um, Brandon, there was a lady though, that isn't one of our clients that David gave us. That's a referral that we need to follow up with that came for today. So, oh, do we know who it was? 
Uh, Mary something. Mary, okay. She she was on the phone. Cal, take a look right meow. She <laughs> was um. Oh, what is she with? She was like one of the first ones. We also had um, Columbia College in Calgary, who isn't one of our clients, who came on too. Oh, okay. Yeah. With Carolyn. Yeah, we had a few clients, which is good. Yeah. Mary something. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe she didn't come on. I saw her come on, and then I didn't see if she left or not. Lots from Kerr. But a few from Kerr Interiors. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty good, actually. I like yeah. them. Good people. Are they one of our clients? They are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, that's good. I saw an asset and chamber of commerce. The problem is I don't know a lot of our clients, right? So it's yeah. not really helpful. But um... yeah, no, this one was better for sure. I think the quality of the sound and the quality of the camera was much better. So okay. we are improving with each one. It's good. It's, well, it's good. I think we what we can talk about it is just around be curious, right? So we we did these not knowing what we were doing. We've we're curious. We've learned. I think that's how I started the one last time. I'm like, so yeah, is a, a giant experiment. It is a giant experiment. Okay, cool. I I've got to run to another thing, so I will talk to you guys later. Yep. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. It's for Jackie. Bye. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for joining us. Hey, no problem. I'll be at all of them. Yeah, yeah. Cool. See ya.